Welcome back. Another episode, Ghetto Correspondent News Network. I'm your host, Ant Dammit. Frankie Dom is on over there. We still quarantining, but we bringing you this content. Great A content for the culture. Make sure, make sure you guys like, like, subscribe, and share all that fly shit. Um, I feel like I'm speeding right now because I'm on like a thousand. Yo, it's been uh it's been a rough couple of days, huh? Yeah, man. I was just saying that. I was like, it's kind of depressing, really. Uh, yeah. To be black in America, it's pretty depressing right now. I know people like our culture and they like our music and our swagger and all that stuff, but it's, it's moments like this when you're like, damn, being black isn't as all cracked up to be as you, you know. No. I think it is. It's no, it ain't. Fucking, it's real fucked up. And uh, not that I want to go into it because it's, it's a meme going on around here. Oh, shit. Hold on a second. What's name just just switched on me? I switched. Yeah, my audio for some reason. I hear you. Yeah, no, I just, but I don't. It came through the computer, then it back out. I don't know. I hit something, but okay. um, now nah, go ahead, continue. I yeah, I was a meme going on when they like uh, the silence from your non-black friend speaks volumes or some shit. Did you see that? No, not yet. But yeah, and I'm like, they're basically saying whoever's non-black that isn't speaking or that they're saying a lot by not speaking. I'm like, okay, well, I don't see any black elites really speaking. Uh, I know Beyonce reposted something. Yeah. Uh, Jay Diddy posted something. But where's Oprah? Where's Lizzo? Lizzo, her big, not to say she's elite, but her big husky ass, she from Minnesota. Isn't it? That's where the bell is from. I now think so. Now's the time to do something for attention. You know what I mean? Right. That speaks values to me. When you got the elitists, the people that black folks worship, you know, they worship the ground they walk on. They'll they'll do anything for these people, and they quiet because they're compromised. They're, they're the, the big dollar corporation businesses own these niggas, and they not saying shit. You know, this is so true. Oprah's the closest thing to a white person speaking for us that we could probably get. Yeah, and that bitch don't say nothing. Nah, so. she don't. So for those of y'all. <laughs> at home, or if you've been living under a rock, if you don't know what uh, he's referring to, uh, the Minneapolis police murdered a, a man by the name of George Floyd on camera. When was this? A uh, couple of days ago? Was it Monday? I think it was Monday. I think it was Monday, yeah. It was right after we released um, the episode. So when you guys watch the episode and wonder why we didn't touch on it, that's why, because it was recorded um, prior to that. But so he was um allegedly George Floyd was suspected of forgery, uh yeah. forging checks and having counterfeit money. Mm. They didn't know that uh forgery and counterfeit money was a death sentence in America. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, Dylan Roof killed nine people in a church. And they took that nigga to Burger King. And the Burger King gave him a bulletproof vest. And then there was another boy, uh, you know, at all these mass shootings these white boys be doing. It was a white boy, like, last year, shot up a Madden tournament in Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, I remember that. Not, like, 12 people. They fucking, they, they didn't touch him. Took his ass to Chick-fil-A, probably. Yeah, he's still at home breathing. So, I mean, he had jail breathing or whatever, but, you know. Right. Rules are different for us. Un unfortunately, it is. And uh, this cop, they haven't released the cop's name. Because I was did, looking for it. Oh, you know it? What's um, his name? Yeah, I'm going to have to probably... <laughs> move the damn because uh, there's a meme going around with his name I think it's is it Derek sounds like it it might be but anyway so that cop had his knee on this man's neck for nine mm -hmm. minutes nine yeah. fucking minutes and the part that pisses me off right is every time we go through one of these situations with um, police and unarmed black men <clears throat> excuse me dying it makes me wonder, like, who are these police that they're getting? Like, if you're that unprepared or that weak, that much of a punk, that uh -huh. you have to put your knee on a man's neck to stop him from moving because you're afraid, you don't you don't need to be a cop. But in that case, with that guy, like I say, I, I should have jotted the shit down because they got his name out there. They got a list of of uh, basically crimes that he's committed as a police officer that he didn't get you know any trouble for where he's known for being a racist. He's known for discriminating towards cops. And the, his attorney that he has is the same attorney that helped 
uh, get that cop out that killed uh, Philando Castell. Is that his name? The guy who really? killed uh, a couple years ago in Minnesota. Same thing. Damn. The attorney that got him off is going to represent him. So they got this whole guy's resume, and he's basically uh, – and that's my question to the Minneapolis police. If I had to, why the fuck are y'all employing people that are blatantly racist and then putting them in black neighborhoods? You should yeah. be putting cops in black neighborhoods. But unfortunately, you know what it comes down to when these cops will be <clears> – <throat> the black cops would do the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it seems like the black cops feel like they got more to prove to the people in the police force than they do the people that they are paid to serve and protect. Some of them, I wouldn't say all of them. Well, another, no, not all of them, but majority, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and, and it sucks that I have to do it like that. Yeah. And, and, and we, some of us ignorantly, we kind of look at black cops like sellouts anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Like one of my friends from high school, he became a cop. We kind of give him a hard time about it. But ideally, honestly, I would feel more comfortable with black cops that look like us, that are familiar with us, that aren't afraid of us in our neighborhoods versus, you know, hick, honky, tonk white boys who fucking got Confederate flags hanging up on their wall at the crib. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they're looking at black and brown people as we're beneath them. And if we yeah. don't do as they say, they have the right to, to kill and us. I don't understand what white people is. If you feel like your black people are beneath you, why do you fear somebody that's beneath you socially? If I feel like you're socially not on my level, why the fuck do I have any fear of you whatsoever? Right. It's like being an ant or, you know what I'm saying? A fucking bug. Like, motherfuckers, but motherfuckers feel that way about spiders. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, they'll see a spider. And and yeah, but I'm just, I just doesn't make any sense. If you know you're, you're socially above, you're on the, the high, you know, the hierarchy, you're up here. What mm -hmm. the fuck are you scared of us for? We, can, we don't fuck with them. Show me right. a video of us fucking with white people. We mind our business. We try, we try to mind our business, but it seems like the more we mind our business, the more we get fucked with. Yeah, and I'm just seeing all kind of videos just circulating. I'm like, I, I'm exhausted. I'm like, I can't watch all this. There's literally enough footage of police brutality on black people. You can sit there and watch it for 24 hours. Yeah. You ain't gotta play nothing. Just run the damn run, tape. Run the exactly. tape. Exactly. It's, it's crazy. It is. I'm, from three years ago, I never heard of. I'm like, yo, I, 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 I get exhausted from it, honestly. And I just like, I can't watch this. I'm not another one. Because so much shit happens that we kind of, you know, we, we deal with it and we get over it. Because that's, un unfortunately, we as black people, that's what we're used to doing. We deal with it. Then we get over it. It's like the lynchings back in slavery. They was used to that shit. Like yep. Someone got hung today. They threw a picnic. And you yep. just kind of on it. And then the next day, y'all just... Went about business. Business as usual. And, yeah. it, and it was the same thing for the slaves. When somebody got lynched, it was like, you know, they, they kind of mourned, did their little thing, but... And the pride, the cycle day, still went on. Yep. Next day, right back to business. And... This 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 whole thing made me um, cause you know I usually unfortunately I try to uh, avoid these things or these type of commentaries. Like I won't watch the video. Like when that video of Nipsey getting murdered was going around, I didn't watch that. There are certain videos I won't watch because I don't like that energy on me, and I didn't want to even talk about this, but. It really, it really touched my spirit because I was like, yo, the fact that that cop had his knee on this man's neck. Mm. And know he's being recorded. You know how much arrogance you got to have to know that you're doing something wrong. You're being and just recorded. Right and there, just looking at the camera too. Like yeah, what that that just shows you white privilege in a, in a grand scheme because this man knows he's doing something wrong. He's looking dead at the camera like, I don't give a fuck because he knows he's not going to get in trouble for it. Yeah, it pissed me off even more. Not to, to take away from the man's life, rest in peace to George Floyd. The people did something courageous that I thought was dope. They didn't do that marching bullshit. We still overcome. They went to this man's house. They put murderer and you know they kind of like vandalized his driveway. And yeah. everyone was standing in front of his house. Don't you know the fucking cops lined up like fuck, like a hundred police officers to protect his home? I'm like, come on now. That's why I don't believe he's really terminated. They say he's terminated, right? Why the they, still, they still protecting him. Yeah, like that's the shit that bothers people. It's like y'all put police on a pedestal like they are above and beyond 
everyday taxpaying citizens. We our taxes pay pay your bills. Right. You're not protecting and serving us. And, like yet, and still y'all treat us like like scum, like right. the dirt on the bathroom floor. And then they got they gave him protection. I'm like, wow. So I already kind of know where this is going. And like I said, if you think the outrage is crazy now, wait till it, they this shit go to trial and get the same. Right. Old if it go if it goes to trial, because he was fired, but has he been charged? Mm, I'm not sure. See, because it was it was four of them, right? It was yeah, him and three other cops. Yeah, he should be charged. But I mean, look, I agree. A lot of Darren Young was charged. Uh, there's a lot of niggas that get charged. You charge it to the game, but do you actually do time? That's different. And if right. he does, um, what they'll do is they'll give him a slap on the wrist. You'll get like three, four years. Like that white girl in Dallas killed that man in his apartment. She got three years, and judge gave her a hug. And, yeah, uh, his brother forgave her. Yeah, hug. so we gotta get we gotta stop all that 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 fucking oh no violence. And, We're too forgiven. Yeah, and I, I I made a video and I was like I know this is gonna be controversial because Michael Porter Jr. NBA player he said that we should pray for the family of George Floyd to pray for the police officers too. I said nah, bro. We what? we don't need niggas like you on the battlefield with us. It's too many. Nah. And I, blame religion on it a lot i'm like that's totally what it is yeah christianity is crazy how two people how white people worship the same god as you but christianity has never hindered them for their hatred for black folks exactly go to church and then burn the house down and hang you the same night (laughs) and and not only that you guys are so hell-bent on this religion right where the fuck was god those 400 years when y'all was out there picking cotton yeah, see, I it even took, get yeah. It it took for people to be like, fuck this shit. I ain't doing this no more. We out. Mm-hmm. For motherfuckers, for something to change. It wasn't God came down and said, hey, you know what yeah. y'all should do? Y'all should probably leave. Look, it's more y'all than it is them. Why don't you go and freaking yeah. attack them? None they of that. It because of business, you know, the, the yeah. North. Yeah, it wasn't for business and Lincoln, man. Shit probably still be going on. So. Uh, they they still I mean shit they want to do it right now. Like if you look at yeah. the, the prison uh industrial complex, like that's just oh, modern day slavery. It's it's overpopulated. They put you got they put more money in prisons than they do schools. Yep. And I went to some of the worst schools in New York that you would think of. Nigga, we had no lockers. We had we had to share textbooks, but Rikers Island, they put all the money in the prison system. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because they figured Fuck it. Don't give them an education. You're going to end up over here yeah. anyway. Most of y'all niggas going to end up there anyway. Did you see the riots? Yeah, I was um, I was looking at that. Um, that was my next uh, point. The um, the riots in, 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 in Minneapolis, they uh, ran up in the Target. Mm-hmm. They, they, they ran up in the Target, looted it, and then burnt that bitch down. Yeah, I heard it burnt down. I seen a few videos. It looked like they burnt the whole fucking... Look like they burned the city down. Like, it looked like yeah, no, they, they they over there wilding. And you know yeah. what? It's like the things that I've been seeing online because it it um this whole situation sparked riots in Memphis and Los Angeles. Yeah, LA, yeah. Outside of Minneapolis. So those three towns, like there's you know, people are outside. And I kind of called this like about a week or two ago. I said there's gonna be some civil unrest pretty soon because people First of all, people are going broke. And second of all, you're not really giving us any other option. And third of all, y'all are still killing us. Yeah. Like in a time where we should all be coming together as the American people, we yeah. as black people still are being treated less That's, than. And what's been the whole gimmick through this whole fucking pandemic? We're in this together, right? Yeah. No, yeah. we ain't. <laughs> I don't understand why America's arrogance is like, y'all think y'all can really have police officers kill black people on camera and we're not supposed to retaliate. We're not supposed to say nothing. You're supposed to stay put, keep your business to yourself. Mm-hmm. And just go on about your day. I mean, eventually you, you keep pushing people. Eventually they got to push back. So you yeah. got a bunch of frustrated black people with no leadership, no, no guidance. There's no leadership in any of these riots. I mean, my son was out there in Minnesota. Um, yeah, but there's no real leadership. So you got a bunch of wild, angry young niggas. Of course they gonna. You know, it's right. like when you mad and you punch a hole in the wall or you slam something. You just it's just uh like 
unorganized frustration. So, I mean, I don't blame them for, for tearing shit up. I just wish they would focus it on the police station, tear that shit up. Right. But unfortunately, they can't because that's like a fortress. They know they go anywhere near there. These motherfuckers gonna be out there with the. I mean, and they they did show up with tear gas, yeah, guns, and all of that other shit. And the crazy part is that the police didn't have the same energy about a month ago when all yeah, of the white right. people came outside talking about some. I want to go outside with their uh-huh. guns and shit. It was all white people. We ain't got no guns. We over yeah. here with our hands and our fucking anger. Throwing and, rocks at cars. Right, throwing rocks. And y'all got to come out with tear gas and fucking. Now, what they're saying that, that white people weren't being violent and they weren't looting. And that's, that's what they'll tell you. That's what they'll say as far as their defense. They weren't doing anything. They were just protesting peacefully. So I guess we got to come outside with our guns. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, Martin Luther King and them protested peacefully, and y'all still hit him in the head with a rock. And what a, like, but that wasn't even a rock. That was a stone. Yeah. Oh, clocked the shit out of him. All that shit. Martin kept on walking. I'd have been like, nah, fuck that. That little white boy would have got stomped out with them uh, fucking yeah. church shoes on. Are you an MLK nigga or a Malcolm X nigga? You know what I mean? Exactly. That's what it comes but there's a lot of people out here right now with that no violence, uh, just keep, I'm like that. That formula of no violence and just praying is the same formula we've had forever, and it's gotten us nowhere. And I right, because it, it's split on Twitter right now. Yeah, you gotta fight hate with love. I'm like, we've been doing that. <laughs> we've been doing that. It's like people, to- people yeah. on Twitter having like mixed emotions about the rioting and the looting. Some people are like, uh, you know. Target is insured all the way down to the wall fixture. So looting and burning them down isn't going to do anything. Uh, what else? Uh, burning down your town. Is, oh, who is that 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 chick, uh, Tommy Lauren or whatever? Tommy Lauren says that? Yeah, she said, um, she said, what is Rob looting and burning down your town going to do? Absolutely nothing. And somebody responded, well, when we peacefully took a knee, y'all had a problem with that. And yeah. Like, Goddamn right. Like, no target, target. You know what? Minnesota has the biggest mall in the world, Mall of America. Burn that motherfucker down. I bet you those, <laughs> I bet you you'll fucking piss some people off. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, my advice to people that's out here, just don't burn down any black businesses. Yeah. In your neighborhoods. Because like I say, there's still black neighborhoods that never recovered from the 68 riots. Yeah, when Martin Luther King got killed, like Watts, California, and Detroit, some some of those black neighborhoods, the cities just never put any more money into those neighborhoods. They never invested back into them, and they just ride it out. And until this day, they're fucked up unless they just want to flip it and gentrify it. Right, that's the only time the hoods ever get any sort of love and attention is when they they want to gentrify it, like come in and and buy the properties cheap. Mm -hmm. Just be careful. Say, if you ruin the whole shit, they are not gonna fucking help build it up. Like they have yeah. we're gonna be on on our own, which which might I mean, if depending on who we have, right? Like as far as um celebrities that wanna, you know, invest as they like to say, like that this would be the time. Like go in and help build up these black communities that have gotten destroyed. Like other than just mm-hmm. be like do it for yourself, do it for other people. Like sometimes people don't even want you to just put money in their pocket. Freaking give them a better living condition. Yeah, because that's more. Because like I said, it's like teaching a person how to fish versus buying them fish. You know. Right. Give me money once, but it'll teach me how to make it, and I'll be fine for life. Did you see the the, the they want to do a that is a July seventh? Yeah. Like, they, this has been going on for a while. I've been seeing that, but I'm like, why July seventh out of all? Yeah. Days? Like three days after the fourth, like why don't you yeah. just go on Independence Day? Like if you gonna, if you really want to be real, you know what I'm saying? Like fuck that, we ain't barbecuing, right? We ain't doing none of that shit. We ain't celebrating this stupid ass holiday because you know the the the, the poor righteous niggas they always bring that up every year. Well, slavery came around, we weren't free, so fuck this. All right, so do it on that day. Don't wait three days after the yeah. barbecue and the, the the fireworks settle and the hangovers gone. And when like, June 19th rolls around, what, what you going to do? But, exactly. Um, that would make more sense. June 19th, okay, don't buy nothing. That has a significant Yeah. Deal. July 7th, I'm like, what the fuck? Who came up with this brand? I said, right. bro, all they do is put out some new Jordans on that day, and these niggas going to cut up. <laughs> That's, That's all they going to do. Yeah, they going to figure out a way to get y'all niggas to spend some money. 
Exactly. That's what I'm saying. They're like, is they, coming. You know what time it is. They just start letting motherfuckers go back outside. They're like, all right, bring the price of the tolls back up. Niggas is like, yo, hold up, man. I just got back outside. Yeah, but they wait till that second stem check here. You think these niggas got any discipline to not spend money <laughs> on doing the Fourth of July? You, week? you think that's coming? I think so, but I still haven't gotten the first one, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You can say whatever. I don't stem- care. Did you did you see that uh that white lady in the wheelchair that they fucking yeah I seen the hit with the fire I extinguisher? I don't know what what what, what does she do? I see niggas wheelchair hit. Jenny is what they call her. So apparently she was uh, trying to stop people from looting the out of the Walmart, and she had a knife and she was stabbing people. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this. And so people was like, "It was like, yo, what are you doing?" They're like, "Yo, she got a knife. She's stabbing people." So they fucking took fire extinguishers and extinguished her ass. Yeah. And then she she played the victim. Like said, there there were people punching me in the back of my head. He punched me in my mouth and it's like just crying. And somebody said that that woman is 30 years old. Wow, she looks like she's somebody's grandmother. Word. I was she like, see, see, that's what happens when you grow up problematic. Your fucking yeah. life stops short somewhere. And you end up in a goddamn wheelchair. At 30. That's crazy. Word. But um, so that happened and it and it sucks because you know. White privilege is at an all-time high this week. It's like, I don't know who the fuck pissed them off, but, man, these motherfuckers is on it. So uh, Central Park Karen, a.k.a. Amy Cooper, she went viral after um, threatening to call the police on a black man in Central Park. Yeah. So, you see the connection with that, right? Huh? You see the connection with that shit, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this this shit is even, this shit is even deeper. Right. This woman, right, verbatim said, I'm going to call the police yeah. and tell them an African-American man is threatening me. That right there alone is her knowing the power that she has with those words. Oh, yeah. Her privilege. She knows she has it, and she's abusing it. And she looked dead into the camera. And then when you look at the guy she called the cops on, if you, did you see Christian Cooper? Yeah, they got the same name too. That was the thing yeah, that yeah, was weirding me was, out. I was like, brother, sister, whatever. No, no disrespect, black man. Christian Cooper is sweet as a candy bar. That nigga wouldn't hit a ladybug. And yeah, she nah, was, he wasn't yeah. hurt nothing. And she was sitting there the nigga was scared her. of the dog. She had a, like yeah. a little little fucking poodle. The poor dog. She beat the shit out of the dog. Oh man, that dog her. took a fucking L. The dog was. You seen the dog face in the video? Like, bitch, why me? The dog took an ass whooping for her shit. And like I say, she this shows you her her privilege that she knows. That's why I say, I don't, if any time a white person tells me they don't have white privilege, show them that video. Yep. And tell me, and don't fucking act stupid. When she puts emphasis on African-American man. I her. Like she did that shit. And all he did was ask her to put a dog on a leash. Mm-hmm, yeah, because that's the requirement in the in the park. Like the the law in New York City is, if you're outside with your dog, you have to have it on the leash. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck how harmless you think the dog is. Not everybody is dog you friendly. Phobias. Dog phobias, yeah, right. You gotta respect but, that. I right, say so Central Park Five. Thirty years later, just with a camera. Thank God, it didn't you know? Uh, right. But he was alleged, allegedly, you know what I mean? He was falsely accused of some shit, just like those boys was falsely right. accused. Somebody else's bullshit. And, and the woman, so, she just didn't want him to tell her to put her dog on a leash. Mm-hmm. This nigga, he's, he's like, he's like backing up and like, you know, she's like, the dog is even like, yo, come on, lady, like, let's go. She's dragging the dog all over there with her, like, you're not going to tell me what to do. You don't tell me what to do. Like, what the fuck? Look, where the hell was Peter? I ain't hear not a word from Peter. Peter. <laughs> I don't I'm know serious. Just, and there's like, it's another video. You see the, the white man in the gym at his apartment. Yeah, I've like, seen that. Three young boys. I'm like, yo, white people, I guess, are really frustrated because of COVID-19. <laughs> so they can't go it. outside. They can't yeah. fucking do they anything. Like, they, are, they are flexing their white privilege. And I was saying, if any white person ever tells me, and look, they, for me, the white people that I connect with in my you know life uh white people who got touch of reality they don't come at me with no bullshit right but i'm like show them any of those videos and sit there and tell me with a straight face you don't have privilege because like mm-hmm. i said if a white guy got killed by the cops he'd be in jail 
you know, period. That cop would have been beneath the jail by now. Yep. If a, if a, if a, a black man had his pit bull off the leash, he would be dead. Like, they wouldn't even be like, put your dog on the leash. They killing him and the dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, but oh. that's what I don't get. Like, you, it's selective outrage because, you know, the moment you say Black Lives Matter, they want to say all lives matter. And it's like, nobody's saying that your life doesn't matter. Clearly, America says that your life matters. Mm-hmm. But apparently, our lives don't matter yeah. because I could be accused of fucking forgery or selling loose cigarettes or stealing some blunts out of a store or all of these things that might be a crime, right? Even if, like, let's say allegedly, right, that maybe it did happen. If that is the crime, killing me does not, none of that is a death sentence. Uh This is not the medieval times to where as though if you stole something, they cut your hand off. Uh, off with his head. Right. <laughs> this is not. Yeah. This ain't it. Matter, like I say, the slogan is cool. Uh, the the movement itself, you know, George Soros and all that shit, and the feminist stuff is kind of you know a reach. But when you say all lives matter, you're basically debunking the whole fucking narrative. We're talking right. we're trying to awareness on our lives. We know everybody else's lives matter. We're trying to put emphasis on us. And when you have people say that, it just debunks the narrative. And um. I hear a lot of black people saying, we need white people to speak for us. I really don't want them to speak for us, but that's what makes it complex because it does help when they speak. Yeah. But um, I just, I don't know if it's feeling like a victim, but I just feel like when you bring white people into it, it kind of just twists the whole narrative and it makes it, because it's supposed to be a black narrative. Right. You bring them into it, now it's an American thing. And yeah. Just, but that might be what we need. That's the fucked up part. No, we need a white person to come in and be like, fuck the, the American thing. It's the black thing. Like, just straight up call it what it is. And oh, yeah, be, call it black. Right. And, and, and just and be a real ally. Like, understand, like, yeah, I know I have privilege. I know. And th- what I mean by that is know that you can get in a cop's face and tell them they're a piece of shit and you're going to walk away. Right. Put your finger right in his face and be like, you piece of shit. Listen here, buddy. You're Uh a piece of shit. That man did not deserve to die. All of it. Like, tell it like it is. And you can walk off. I do that. Shit. Y'all might not even see me no more. This will be the last episode. Yeah, you'll be done. They'll tase you. I seen a video of some black woman getting hit in the head. You know, she had to fight back. But, you know, a man tried to save her. And uh, they tased him. You know, my thing is when you're recording these videos and everybody's like, don't record them, do something. Well, you got to be ready to take that. Yeah. Because it was three of them around uh, George while the cop is on, like, got his knee on his neck. Yeah. And he would have came and tried to, and we got numbers. It got to be like 10, 20 of us just jump the situation. Because if one person tries to stop it, you're going to get killed. Yeah. You know? You can, we do outnumber them. I'm gonna say, if it was 20 people watching, shame on y'all. Y'all should have bum rushed that situation. It's 20 yep. of y'all, four cops. I know they got guns, but if you really ready for a civil war, you gotta be ready to take a bullet. And putting your phone out ain't good enough. Right. Right is right, wrong is wrong. You see that shit happening. I'm sure there was some white people that walked by and was like, yo, this ain't right. Like, what? what? They but they just, they just minding their business because they're like, yeah. shit, I gotta, you know. It was an Asian dude out there, an Asian cop. Oh wow! And you know he it's, ain't going. He ain't going to go man. against the white. Yeah, that's why I say, as far as like a war goes, we're really we don't have any allies. No, <laughs> who's gonna fucking stand with us and, and really fuck with us like that? Yeah, but you know, unfortunately, these people that do this right, so the cops lost their jobs. Those four cops. Amy lost her job and she had to get a dog back. Not to mention the dog was a rescue dog. So he was already traumatized. And here you are dragging him through a park. He probably saw his little light flash before his eyes in the heart. Uh, and um, that guy that harassed those kids in the, the building, he, I think he lost his, his office or something. Good, good. Yeah. So there, there, there are repercussions. One thing I will say is I do have to applaud... Um, Minneapolis on the, the the quick action. Like the mayor went into action real fast. There was no like, we're gonna wait and see what happens. He was like, no, they're fired right away. Now, whether they go back to work or not, that's, you know, 
And that's the thing. Like, white people, have the, like you said, when you go back to privilege, they can lose it all and bounce back. And right. Like, oh, that girl, she's going to have another job at another company and another... Well, she had a mask on her face, so you don't really know what she looks like. Right. She'll but you know her name. <laughs> yeah, you know her name. She can change it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you get another job. And same thing with... with, with they'll, they'll, they'll rebound. I just don't... Under, I don't even understand it. I don't even believe they are fired because I mean I just that don't make any sense. The the, the over the top protection that that right. guy got, that doesn't stick. Well, I think it's partly because you know when you become a cop, like you still have, like you make some friends in the in the force, right. like okay. right. So even if even if you do do something wrong, like they're like people that are like y'all, I got your back. You know, yeah. like that's the most loyal gang in the world. More exactly, loyal, Bloods, Crips, Vice Lords, any of that. They they are loyal to a fault. They they got that blue brotherhood, and yeah. um, they're gonna always hang each other's back. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. But um, yeah, I I don't know, man. I I do like that there are people taking action. I just we just need more action. We need like serious consequences because we need. For this to to stop, we need for cops to be scared to freaking throw a, a black man, woman, or child to the ground. You know, they need to think twice before they do it. Oh, yeah. They need to know that look, you can lose everything. Take the pension, the fucking house, car, everything. Oh yeah. Maybe, and that's why some people are like, oh, burning your neighborhood down isn't doing anything. It's not scaring them. I'm like, yeah, right. you gotta start burning down some of these police stations. Yeah, like I, I'm, I might nice sound fucked up, but when that, uh, when that, remember in Dallas a few years ago, when the cop, when somebody was on the roof sniping cops. Yeah, I'm like, yo, that's the kind of energy, you know? That yeah, because you get their attention that way. Unfortunately, <laughs> like, don't, don't get us shit. twisted. None of us, we neither one of us are saying, hey, go out and do this. Yeah, yeah. We're you know, just I'm saying not, what call it, you should. Right. We're just saying what actually gets action yeah, and attention. That's what gets the attention. And then Obama went to the funeral. Yeah, well, just because he was the president, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> like unfortunately, he ain't got a choice. I know he probably was like, "Yo, this is some bullshit." Like I'm torn between two yeah, worlds. That funeral, but didn't go to um, Aretha Franklin's funeral. <laughs> he probably had something important to do. I don't know. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Did um, did you hear about Twitter wanting to cancel uh, Doja Cat? You know who Doja Cat is. I know who that is, but I just haven't paid any attention to that bitch. I just know, was she, she racist or some shit like that? Apparently she made some racist comments. Now, um, I never really listened to her music and it's funny because I was dropping my daughter and her friend off earlier and the, the, that song that she got with, with Nicki Minaj, Say Say So or something like that, was on the radio. And I was like, oh, okay, I you know now I know who the song is. But um, she she made some uh, racist comments. So apparently she was in uh, this tiny chat. This girl's 24 years old, right? So let's put everything in the context. She's 24. She's a biracial woman. Oh, she's, God, about the next uh, one. South African and Jewish. Mm, African so, Jew. Yeah. That's a tough one, right? Yeah. So basically she, she used to hang out in these chat rooms. So you remember the tiny chats from back in the day? Tiny chat. Huh? I was say, people's tiny chat is still around? I guess. I don't know if it's still around, but people um, people found the video. Mm -hmm. And they were like, um, I guess. So originally what happened was, I guess she had told, she had told a bunch of people or she told social media that if she gets number one or something, she's going to show her tits, right? That's what she said. And apparently she was like, I'm just playing. Like, and motherfuckers got pissed. So, you know, we piss off got. fucking Twitter niggas. They going to they gonna find something to fucking get back at you. So a video started circulating of Doja Cat in a uh, chat with some known racists. Basically, she was in this chat with um, alt-right, white supremacists, I guess, and mm -hmm. incels. Do you know what incels are? No. Nah. I just learned this word the other day, too. They're involuntarily celibate. People who can't get ass? People who Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> niggas who can't get no pussy. So those are the people she pissed off. And those, the, the incels or whatever, is the ones that, you know, were mad that she wasn't going to show a tits. It was like, fuck that. Like, you, you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. And yeah. so 
they found um some video of her in this chat room with this alt right group, right? And then they also did some more digging and found a song that she did in 2005 called Didn't Do Nothing. Nothing. Did you know? Uh, 2015, sorry. Oh, okay. The song is Didn't Do Nothing. Do you, and um, apparently the word Didn't Do Nothing is a racial slur used by white supremacists to describe black people who claim to be innocent after police brutality. So basically, oh, wow. I didn't do nothing, but they, they write it as didn't do nothing. D-I-N-D-U-N-U-F-F-I-N. And so she had the song, that was the song that she wrote, and they alleged that she also had um, some, uh, some, some not good remarks about the death of Sandra Bland. So now at first, when I heard this and they were like, she's biracial, I'm like, well, how can the biracial girl really be like, how much racist can she be? Cause they said, oh, she was saying, oh, niggas ain't shit. And it was like, well, is she lying? Like, come on, let's be real here. Like y'all say it every day, you know, like as, as black women say this shit every day, like, so if a half black woman says it, does that make it, it doesn't hold any more value? Like, what's that? And then as I did the research and I found out all this other shit, I was like, well, that's a little, like the whole didn't do uh, nothing song, like, and then finding out that that's a racial slur was like, okay. Now, I don't know if she was doing that just trolling or it's because she was hanging out in these chats with these fucking incels and these alt-rights. So, like, now here we are and it's like, do she deserve to be fucking canceled yeah <laughs> i would I think so too okay i didn't even I, I didn't know what people was talking about it. i was i didn't even know who the fuck she was i never heard of her i was like doja cat i was like what the as fuck a chick me? that did uh bitch i'm a cow that was the I song i thought she was a porn star or something like that doja cat i was like what that does but, sound like a nice porn star name and i ain't trying to defend her but i mean you can go back and look at people's tweets from 10 years ago and y'all can look at some of my tweets from 10 years ago and it's not a reflection of who I am now. I mean, shit, I was, I'm not racist, but <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I said know, some wild shit. Yeah, even when Kobe died, I look back at some of my old Kobe tweets and some of them was kind of out of line, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. You know what I mean? When I was 20 years old 10 years ago. But that's how you, but that's keeping the same energy. Like, you obviously felt the way, like, and that's more, most sports fans, like, mm-hmm. sports fans talk shit. Like yeah, I mean, so, I it's crazy, like fuck your wife or nothing. Now some niggas right. go, but it's just an, like an example. Like I, I'm not the same person I was ten years ago. But, and I'm sure, and I'm sure, like you know, God bless his soul, Kobe probably understand. Like people talk shit. People are going to say yeah, the wildest shit ever, especially shit. when right. It's in competition. That's mm-hmm. understandable. It, it, speaking of like old tweets or whatever, I was looking on uh Facebook the other day. You know, how Facebook always showing oh, yeah. you yeah. your memories or whatever. Ten years ago, I said some wild shit. Oh, I said I something said, like, shit. "I'm like, yo, I said that." <laughs> yo, I looked at the shit, and at first, I was like, "Damn, I should share this." Then I read it, I was like, "I ain't sharing it." The shit was crazy. What'd you it say? was like, I said, um, I was in the DMV. I was like, no, I was like, there's a tranny in the DMV, right? <laughs> and I go, at first, I thought it was an ancient, an ancient stripper. Then I heard it speak. This shit you can't make up, right now. This was 10 years ago. Like, oh, yeah. imagine putting that shit out right now, motherfuckers, oh, God, yeah. at my God, neck. God, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, L, the, the, yeah, the LBGT. The, the oh, Q. my God. <laughs> and I'm looking, I like, I even, I was like, hold up, because I was like, how many comments? I'm looking at the comments. I'm like, all right, let me read. But it was a different time. Like, people talk freely. And nothing that I said was of hate. Like, I had nothing to, against the person. But the context in which it was said, someone would be like, oh, you had a problem with the transsexual in the DMV? Oh, yeah. No, I just thought it was an old ass stripper until I heard her talk. And I was like, oh, shit, that's a, a he, she, you know, yeah. like. So it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I like this whole thing, like finding out that didn't do nothing is a racial slur. I was like, oh, yeah, this they they really this woman does need to address this. Now. Yeah. According to her, she said, well, I was young and I used to hang out in 
chat rooms to socialize with people and blah, blah. It's like, hold up, but you were a kid hanging out in chat rooms. That's first of all. Where are your fucking parents? Like, we can't, like, all of the blame can't go to her. Like, we have to put some of the, like, when shit like this happens and it was a kid, some of the blame has to go to the parents because the parents should be like, yo, this is cool. That isn't cool. You know, like, the parents have to set the, the barriers. Like, I was like, um, right, because you, your kid is out here in these chat rooms with these goddamn white supremacists, and yeah, she might be biracial, which means like part of my family is white, part of my family is black. Uh, you know, a lot of times, even you know, unfortunately, Nas said this in the song. He said, you know, when he was talking about the different types of women, he was saying if she's mixed, a possible, a possible psycho alert goes off because. A lot of times the the biracial women are even more confused because they're not fully accepted by the black side and they're not fully accepted by yeah, the white side. Like so the, like the dude I was talking about, the NBA player, he's biracial. Yeah. His father was a cop, his mother is uh, white, you know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of times, depending on what parent if especially if it's a biracial person who comes from a, a broken home, depending yeah. on what parent they was with, a lot of times that will uh dictate like what what kind of upbringing they have you know what i'm saying yeah so if your mom's white your pops was black but you grew up with your moms you know in a white household even though you're biracial i mean you're gonna have you're gonna white think viewpoints mm-hmm. you know yeah if it's the other way around and you around the niggas you know then you're gonna, you know so it's like that but i'm not biracial so i wouldn't necessarily know by from experience but that's what it looks like right well and that's exactly what it like you know, not to give too much of my personal business away, but like my son is biracial. Like, well, his mother is biracial, Mm -hmm. but he's more black than anything. But, Mm -hmm. you know, he lives in a predominantly white state. Most of his friends are white, you know? So it's like- I couldn't even tell your son was biracial. Huh? I couldn't even tell your son was biracial. Yeah, well, because he he looks like a black- yeah, he is yeah, a young yeah. black man, yeah. but it's just, you know, his mom is half black, half white. So, mm-hmm. you know, but she identifies with most of her white side, which, you know, yeah. like we said, you broken home. Like, who do you predominantly live with? So, yeah. yeah. So I get it. But that's why that's where my job as father comes in to, like, at least, you know, let oh, my son wow. know. Right you know like let him know where he's at like there's nothing wrong with your with where you are and how you you know who you hang out with what they they, their beliefs are that's all good i have nothing with that but understand who you are where you come from and where we are in this world Mm -hmm. that's what her parents didn't do i don't care like a white mom especially with a biracial kid the first thing you should do is inform your kid that yeah you black. Right. <laughs> but don't get it twisted. It's like the way I say the picture I've seen of your son, I would have thought he was just, you know, 100% Negro. You know what I mean? But yeah. because that's the way the world is going to see you, and you have to know how to carry yourself as a black man. Somebody might not know that you're one age Portuguese or Indian or half white, you know what I'm saying? But the, what you look like, if you look like you black, that's how you're going to get treated on the that's streets. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. And so, that's why at first when I read this, I was like, all right, so what's the problem here? But when I did the re- the digging, I was like, okay, where's her parents? Like, cause as much as we want to hold this, this Doja Cat girl responsible, like a lot of the responsibility is on her because she did say it. She did create this song and put it out knowing that what she said was a racial slur. Now, was she doing that to trolling to get attention? Probably. And it didn't get the attention that she thought it was going to get back then. But unfortunately, it's getting it today. I don't know, today yeah. It's not the time that you want to have that type of attention. No, especially this week. No. Nah. Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, and it all came up in the same week. Oh, I thought they were talking about this since last week. Because people keep bringing it up. And I'm like, who the fuck is Doja Cat? I've never heard of this. Before. I don't know, man. I, listen. I'm, I'm getting out of touch. I'm usually in the loop with everything. I'm like, I I, you know, and I had no, I had no, I was out of the loop and I honestly didn't even care to even, uh, <laughs> to even find out that one of my coworkers, one of these little niggas was like, yo man, what you think about Doja Cat? And I was looking at him like, white boy, I was like. Oh, <laughs> like who? Nigga, you know what we called Doja back in my day? That was weed, nigga. 
fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, who the fuck is that? It sound like a stripper bitch, you know? Word. Might as well be, but I mean, damn, that sucks. Dude. This 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 episode was like predominantly race inspired. <laughs> this is the race episode. Dude. Unfortunately, race racism is still alive. Colored, colored only episode. Colored's only, yeah, right. For colors only, <laughs> I like that. There you we have it. Segregation, man. Huh. We're going to have to go back into segregation, man. I said that. I said that this COVID shit was bringing back segregation. Like, you got people afraid to stand next to you. Like, I got, uh, like I said, I ate, the community I work in is predominantly Asian. Like, a lot of times the freaking the, the Asian ladies won't walk up the steps. And I'm like, damn, like, all right, let me get out the damn way, you know? And they'll sit there and smile, like, on some old nervously. Like, but, lady, I know what it is. Like, I get it. Like, I don't want to yeah. wear a damn face mask in public all the time, but exactly. I do it because of the simple fact that it's for everybody else. It's not for me. I ain't scared, but everybody else around here is freaking out. And if they see you without a mask, they think you're a rebel or a renegade. I applaud uh, some of the old people that I see because these old people, they do not give a fuck, man. They be outside, no mask, everything, just chilling. And I'm telling you, like, I got some customers that got to be like 100 years old. Nah. And they come outside, no mask, nothing. They just be chilling. And I'm like, damn, like, that's... Sandals. Yup, yeah. everything. Like, it ain't nothing changed. Like, this old dude, I'm talking about this nigga old as hell. He walk his dog every day. I see him on the porch. This motherfucker, like, he was out of breath the other day. Like, no mask. He was like, I was like, you all right? He's like, yeah, I'm just taking a break. Like this dog well, that's is probably breathing. why you can't wear the mask. You can't if you can't breathe. I'm pretty sure you're not gonna be able to breathe in that mask. I can't I breathe with the damn thing on. Yeah, as I say, I don't wear it as much as I don't wear it every day outside. It depends on where I'm going. Now where I'm at, I'd say seventy percent of these people out here that took their fucking mask off. They like fuck it. You know where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I might see maybe five out of ten people may have a mask on. They don't have the right one on. They got that that the one they give you at the dentist office. Yeah, that's what everybody wear. I mean, them, them, them N95 masks are the worst anyway. Like, I'm walking at least 15 miles oh, a day. Yeah. I can't wear a goddamn mask the entire time I'm walking. I wear them when I go inside buildings, and that's it. Other than that, I no, unless, like, there's a crowd of people, and I, like, I got to walk up to them. Like, but other than that, I'm not wearing this damn thing. Fucking annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it is man but i don't want to sound like to be that guy and be like oh well you got a problem with it but um mm. yeah so so that's our episode this week um for colors only i guess <laughs> <laughs> and that is crazy man it feels like fucking the 60s all over again yeah 1955 out here man it's crazy Emmett yeah, Till, yeah. and mega evers you know, fight the power type shit. Like I say, I'm just normally, you know, it, before I get out of here, like I say, social media is uh, like black social media. We normally, this is jokes, music, memes. I think you've seen this week the power that we really can use with social media, how powerful it is when we decide to cut out all the jokey jokes and really uh, demand justice and really highlight real shit. And imagine if we talked about real shit at least 85% of the time. You know yeah. what I mean? But instead, it's normally the opposite. We spend most of the time silly shit. And because our lives are murders on fucking camera hard out for here. Us to... I, well, yeah, so we use social media as like humor. Right. It's That's our like therapy. Bad, but it's if, freaking rough out here, yeah, bitch. But if we, focus, yeah, if we focus more on real shit, at least have a balance. You know what I'm saying? With my nigga Umar, that's what I'm. I'm, I'm gonna get. Oh shit! All right, time week. for me to go. <laughs> I'm gonna get my get my hat. And my get my nigga Umar. Get your yeah, kufi ready. Me. Yes, sir. Get oh my shit! Get all that. Hell yeah! All right. Well, you're right. We definitely got to put our uh, social media powers to good use. And uh, I appreciate you once again, homie. It's been real as always. I enjoy these. Salute okay. to you. Stay safe out there. And I'll be in touch. All right, bro. Stay up. All right, you two. One.